Flight 10 is closer than ever. After multiple delays, it marks SpaceX's next chance to secure a breakthrough, unlocking a vital phase of preparation for Starship's future. Every element of the mission has been planned with precision, with key tasks designed to prove Starship's true capabilities. So how will Flight 10 play out? Which objectives matter most, and why are they crucial for the program's next steps? Let's dive in on today's episode of Great SpaceX to find out. SpaceX has now completed all testing of the Starship hardware, which means the stage is finally set for the next flight. With preparations behind us, the spotlight has shifted to the skies, and everyone is asking the same question. What exactly will happen during this upcoming mission? As always, SpaceX has been quick to share updates. This includes a review of the issues that occurred during Flight 9, as well as the detailed plan for the upcoming Flight 10. Since we already covered Flight 9's setbacks in a previous episode, it is now time to turn our full attention to the new flight and its objectives. Mark your calendars because Flight 10 is scheduled for Sunday, August 24th. This date falls within the launch window that was previously confirmed by the Navigation Center. Liftoff is set for 6.30 p.m., a timing that provides the added benefit of allowing daylight observation of both the booster and the ship during their respective landings, even though those landing zones are located half a world apart. With this foundation in place, the script for the flight has been carefully designed. Let us begin with the Super Heavy Booster, which will once again be at the heart of this mission. Right from the start, SpaceX sparked excitement by announcing the upcoming flight will continue to expand the operating envelope on the Super Heavy Booster. With multiple landing burn tests planned, this means the booster's descent phase will be the true highlight of the flight. However, the company also made it clear that there will not be a catch attempt this time. Instead, SpaceX confirmed the Super Heavy booster will attempt these experiments while on a trajectory to an offshore landing point in the Gulf of Mexico and will not return to the launch site for catch. The reason for this is simple but important. SpaceX is treating Flight 10 as an opportunity to run a series of flight experiments that are designed to gather critical real-world performance data. These data points will help the company refine future flight profiles and prepare for possible off-nominal scenarios that could arise during more advanced missions. The sequence will begin with the familiar ascent, followed by stage separation. Once separation takes place, the Super Heavy Booster will perform an active flip. This maneuver will be assisted by hot staging, where the thrust of the Starship engine helps push the booster into its intended trajectory. This process, which was proven successful during Flight 9, is intended to optimize fuel usage and extend the booster's overall reach. Greater efficiency in this phase directly translates into an improved payload capacity for Starship, a key factor for future operational missions. Next, the booster will conduct a boost back burn using 13 engines from the center and inner ring. This is a particularly challenging maneuver that demands absolute engine reliability. SpaceX will need to ensure that the problems encountered during Flights 7 and 8, where engine instability caused setbacks, do not reappear during this test. But the real focus of Flight 10 lies in its landing burns. SpaceX has explained, SpaceX has explained that the primary test objectives for the booster will be focused on its landing burn and will use unique engine configurations. Among these tests is one of the most ambitious challenges yet, completing a landing burn with only two engines. In this scenario, one of the three central engines will be intentionally disabled, forcing the booster to rely on a backup engine from the middle ring to carry out the burn. If successful, this will allow Super Heavy to hover above the ocean surface with two engines alone. Once the test objectives are met, both engines will shut down, and the booster will fall into the water as planned. Of course, before any of this can happen, SpaceX must ensure that the booster's engines are performing flawlessly. The increased difficulty of these tests comes with greater risk. During Flight 9, the booster encountered an engine failure during its landing burn, and that problem brought the mission to an early conclusion. For Flight 10, solving this issue and demonstrating stable performance will be absolutely vital. After the Super Heavy's daring journey, attention will naturally turn to the ship itself, where another series of ambitious tests are set to unfold. Just like the booster, the ship will not yet attempt a full return to the launch site. Instead, it will once again be brought down in the ocean, allowing SpaceX to focus entirely on pushing the the envelope of testing without the added risk of a precision landing. SpaceX explained its reasoning clearly. The flight test includes several experiments focused on enabling Starship's upper stage to reach the launch site. 
In other words, what we will see during this flight is groundwork. Before the ship can ever attempt a return to Texas, it must prove that it can withstand the challenges of a full orbit, then safely re-enter. To do that requires not only more powerful engines, but also far more advanced protection systems. This is why, that is why one of the key highlights of this mission will be the real-life test of one of ship's engines while in space. This will be attempted with a sea-level engine repeating a feat that was first conducted during Flight 6. This ability to restart engines while in orbit is absolutely critical. It ensures that Starship will be able to adjust its trajectory, execute orbital maneuvers, and eventually bring itself home. Preparations for this include a single engine test performed before flight, which SpaceX has emphasized as an important step in ensuring readiness. But the engines are only part of the story. But the engines are only but the engines are only one part of the story. The real trial by fire lies in the ship's protection system, more commonly known as the heat shield. For this mission, SpaceX SpaceX has revealed some bold changes. A significant number of tiles have been deliberately removed from vulnerable areas of the ship. The purpose of this is to stress test how these regions behave under the brutal heat and pressure of re-entry. At the same time, SpaceX will introduce metallic tiles for the very first time. These tiles will be paired with an active cooling system, creating a new approach to safeguarding the vehicle. If successful, this experiment could shape the way Starship survives future descents through Earth's atmosphere. Another notable adjustment to the heat shield will take place at the catching points, located on both sides of the vehicle. Once again, SpaceX will install simulation fittings to mimic the structure of the real catching system that will eventually allow Starship to be caught by the launch tower. These points will be tested for both thermal and structural resilience, and while they will still be protected by tiles, their results will form the foundation for refining the design of the actual catching hardware. In addition to this, SpaceX is addressing specific problems that were discovered in past flights. During Flight 6, engineers identified hotspots forming along the tile lines. The company will apply a smoothed and tapered edge to some of the tiles in an effort to distribute heat more evenly and prevent concentrated damage. Of course, beyond all of those experiments, the fundamental role of the heat shield remains unchanged. It must protect the ship during re-entry and allow it to, to land in the best possible condition. This is vital for enabling future catch attempts. Attention will also be given to the ship's aft flaps, which have often been a weak point in previous missions. These control surfaces are critical for guiding the vehicle through its atmospheric descent. For Flight 10, SpaceX has made it clear that the re-entry profile will be deliberately designed to push the flaps to their structural limits particularly at the moment of maximum dynamic pressure. By doing this, engineers can better understand the stress tolerances of the flaps and refine the durability for future flights. Beyond testing its core systems, the ship also has a payload mission. This time, SpaceX plans to deploy eight Starlink simulation Starlink simulation satellites. These satellites are similar in size to the upcoming next-generation Starlink models. However, unlike operational deployments, these will be released only at suborbital altitudes. They are designed to burn up during re-entry, ensuring safety even in the unlikely case that debris survives. By doing this, SpaceX gains valuable experience with deployment mechanisms while still maintaining a cautious approach. Taken together, the missions of both the Super Heavy Booster and the ship in Flight 10 are defined by experimentation. They are not about showmanship, but about learning, data, and refinement. SpaceX emphasized this point by stating that these trials are intended to continue to provide valuable learnings to inform the design of the next-generation Starship and Super Heavy vehicles. With production ramping up inside Star Factory at Starbase alongside new launch and test infrastructure actively being built in Texas and Florida, Starship is poised to continue iterating towards a rapidly and fully reusable launch system. This is why Flight 10 is not just another test. It is a major step forward in SpaceX's journey toward rapid reusability and interplanetary capability. With every risk, every experiment, and every test, the company gets closer to making Starship a reliable workhorse for humanity's future in space. Flight 10 is built on more than just headline tests. It relies on the small but vital steps that make the mission possible. These begin an hour before launch, when Starship and Super Heavy are fully loaded with liquid oxygen and liquid methane at cryogenic temperatures. Alongside this, the engines are chilled to prevent thermal shock, cracks, or catastrophic failure once propellant flows. As fueling ends, the water deluge system activates, flooding the pad to protect it from the searing heat and deafening acoustics of 33 Raptors roaring to life. Then comes liftoff. For the tenth time, the world's largest rocket will climb skyward, pushing through Max Q, 
or the point of maximum aerodynamic stress. At staging altitude, Super Heavy shuts down and the ship ignites in a dramatic hot staging sequence, blasting through the new inner stage as the booster flips away. From there, the two stages diverge. Super Heavy executes a boost back burn and a hot staging throw step, likely one of the last times this maneuver will be used, before descending toward the Gulf off the coast of Texas. It's in space work, engine relights, heat shield trials, and possibly Starlink deployments. Then comes reentry, where plasma, extreme heating, and aerodynamic forces test its systems. As it slows through transonic and subsonic speeds, the ship uses its flaps to remain stable before performing its dramatic landing flip. Though it'll splash down at sea, the focus is on refining precision and control for future returns to the launch site. The mission's outcome will determine what comes next. If successful, Flight 11 may attempt the first ever tower catch, a daring leap that Musk has called only a maybe. Even a failed attempt would yield data vital for transitioning to the V3 era. If Flight 10 falls short, the catch may be delayed to early next year, pushing back the timeline for full reusability. That is why this flight carries such weight. It results, bleh, its results will shape the path to 2026, a year when Starship must prove readiness for Moon and Mars campaigns. Every milestone achieved on August 24th will either accelerate or delay that future. The countdown is on, and soon the skies above Starbase will reveal the outcome. Flight 10 could be another turning point in space exploration, marking the moments when years of relentless work converge into progress, or when challenges demand more time. This has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly on the latest milestones in SpaceX's journey. Thank you so much for watching, and always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you so long as you keep looking up.